Cold War, Soviet scientists may have engineered an ancient disease into a killer that can be quickly spread. They were able to develop a plague with resistance to many different antibiotics. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Revelations of lax security at Soviet biowarfare labs are cause for new concern about a deadly pathogen genetically engineered by those same labs. We reported recently on the decoding of the plague genome, recalling the dreaded black death of the Middle Ages, bubonic plague. But it's another form of this disease that compels our attention today, pneumonic plague, a far more contagious and deadly strain even in its natural state. Computer. Can you fill us in? Sherlocky, bubonic, and pneumonic plague are caused by the same bacteria, Yersinia pestis. They just have a different delivery system. Bubonic plague typically is carried by rats and spread by fleas, transferred only when the fleas which bite the rats then bite people. The bacteria multiply rapidly and move to the lymph nodes causing painful swelling called buboes, hence the term bubonic. The disease also causes hemorrhaging, which creates dark splotches under the skin, the black death. Pneumonic plague, on the other hand, mimics pneumonia. Lodging in the respiratory system, it's an airborne disease and can be spread through a cough or sneeze by an infected person. It can be effectively spread as widely as six miles and can last up to an hour. The reason pneumonic plague hasn't been more of a problem in the past is that, in its natural form, it can't live long in air and sunlight. This uh, pathogen is not very stable in aerosol and environment, uh, but uh, the Soviet uh, military, uh, they developed uh, a weapon uh, which was uh, more stable in aerosol. Dr. Ken Alabek is a former first deputy director of the Soviet Offensive Bioweapons Program. He moved to this country in 1992, and he now heads George Mason's University Center for Biodefense. While he was a Soviet scientist, he and his comrades had worked to make a bulletproof version of Yersinia pestis. And uh, by, I would say, by uh, mid-80s, they were able to develop uh, plague with resistance to many different antibiotics. Dr. Olibeck and his colleagues are trying to learn how to protect against such genetically armored superbugs. He thinks the effectiveness of current antibiotics would be limited. When we talk about possible use of genetically engineered pathogens, it's a completely different situation. You cannot use antibiotics because in many cases they wouldn't work. Research on new vaccines is underway, but Dr. Alabek believes there are just too many varieties of bioweaponry for vaccine development to be practical and affordable. His group is working on a different approach. We uh, call this approach immunomodulating approach. And the general idea to find some ways uh, to modulate, to enhance non-specific immunity of the body and just in, uh, to induce it such a way that the immune system would be able to eliminate these inviting uh, pathogens by itself. Even if it's only temporary, this could protect military personnel going into a hazardous area and strengthen the immune response of civilians to fight off a biological attack. Eventually, better knowledge of the plague germs should also help. Towards that end, a project is underway at the Sanger Institute in England where earlier this year, scientists broke the plague's genetic code. They have nearly 50 bacterial genome projects underway, comparing dangerous and more benign bacteria to better understand their life cycles. The evolution of bacteria is not a question of, uh, of, of slow accretion of mutations, of, of, of mutations being passed down. Um, through the generations. Bacteria are, are very acquisitive organisms. And at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, scientists study how bacteria behave. The plague is a model organism. 
One startling discovery was that the plague had once been a harmless microbe, living more or less peacefully in the gut, until sometime between 2,000 and 20,000 years ago when it turned into a killer all at once. Yersinia pestis is a fascinating study because historically it has shaped Western civilization. It has caused so many deaths and it's fascinating to study that, to try to work out how it did that, what makes this organism tick. And we're beginning to understand that at the genetic level now with the genome sequence. We clearly know it's gained a lot of DNA, it's made it more adaptable, more transmissible, more virulent. It's gone through this process of mixing its DNA around. These scientists saw the story unfold in the sequencing of the plague genome. It's a bit like reading a genetic history book. In the genome, sort of written within the genome, is a history of the evolution of the organism. It says not just what it's doing now, um, but what it used to do, uh, where it's come from, um, what it's acquired in order to do what it's doing. The Sanger Center used the raw DNA derived from plague bacteria to sequence the genome and produce its genetic map. On it, Julian Parkhill finds evidence of a fateful change that turned the plague into a killer. The genes are color-coded to differentiate the new deadly genes in blue from the old benign genes in brown, which have been switched off. So if you look down here, there's a huge peak in one of these graphs. Um, and this is a region that's been acquired from elsewhere. It's what we call a pathogenicity island. It's um, a piece of mobile DNA. It's come in from elsewhere. It encodes sequences that are important for the organisms. Although the plague still kills about 3,000 people every year, it's been largely controlled by antibiotics. But the production of weaponized antibiotic-resistant strains has raised the threat to a whole new level. This new DNA technology may make it possible to screen for these bulletproof pathogens as we devise a defense against them. It could be an alert. One of the potential applications of this is in a, for bioterrorist agents. For example, if someone had altered the genome for a pa highly pathogenic organism for ne nefarious purposes, we should potentially be able to not just identify the organism, but identify whether uh, that bioterrorist group has cloned in any of these really nasty genes, because they're also on this array. Today, other bacteria are emerging which show many of the same traits and behaviors as a plague pathogen. Scientists fear that one of them could cause a disaster comparable to the Black Death of medieval times. Today, the possibility of new killer pathogens and the weaponizing of old ones has given a new urgency to the search for biological protection and made genetic science our main line of defense. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.